the trucking industry is cutthroat. You know how people say, well, she'll never show her trucks. So you know what I do? Let me tell you what a uh, like me gonna do. You know the people that's on the internet talking, saying they got this, here's proof. I screenshot the and I'm calling them shippers taking their loads. Everybody start clapping right now. The, man, the guru in the building, the trucking guru. <laughs> rolling like a 18 wheeler. Hey, hey, rolling like hold on. <laughs> hey, man. Trucking guru in this bitch. Y'all already know what time it is, man. Yep. What's been going on? Everything, 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 everything. Blessings on blessings on blessings. Man, uh, before we kick it off, man. You know, there has been this perception of you that's been created that you're a mean person. <gasps> and before we, you know, get delve off into all the things, all the blessings that you had, we just want to touch on, you know, because God wouldn't bless such a mean spirited person. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, let's talk about where that even came from. Um, Why does everybody think you so mean? I truly do not know. I was on my live today. And a gentleman joined the live and he, you know, told me his piece and told me he needed help. And I listened to him for a while. And he said, I'm really glad. I thought you were going to be me. I don't know why people think that I'm mean. I'm not mean. Um, Just don't fuck with me. I'm a, yeah, somebody <laughs> once said, hey, man, I heard, heard y'all got the cussing guru up there. I, I, oh, you mean the trucking guru? No, you know, I'm in the cussing guru. <laughs> oh, I'm going to cuss you the fuck out if you come for nah, me. Yeah, nah, I am. Nah. But I'm very nice. I'm not mean at all. Um, I want to say, um, and maybe you tell me if you think I'm wrong, but, uh, people feel like when you're darker complected, mm. that you tend to be more ghetto or mm -hmm. more ratchet or mm -hmm. more mean or this or that. That's true. Do you feel like that has played into this perception that the internet has created? No, although that is true. I, I agree with what you're saying. I don't think that's it. Um, a lot of people caught me on live. And if people talk shit, I'm going to talk shit back. And, you know, I think that's the problem. <laughs> now, I ain't going to lie. Uh, when they seen the very first interview that came out, a lot of men got turned on by that foul mouth. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying like I, I, you go to the comments and a lot of people were like really attracted to the type of temperament you were on. Like, oh, I, mean, I need a boss in my life like and, that. And, and I, I am a boss. But before I'm anything, I'm a woman of God and I always treat people with the love of God. So I don't want people to think that I'm not approachable or I'm not nice. Just treat me how you want to be treated. If you come for me, I'm gonna come for you. If you're nice, I'm gonna be nice. So with that being said, a lot of people have come for you. Yes. And you... Give them that same energy. Period. Throw it right back at them. Mm -hmm. What does that do for your spirit? Like, does it, like, it to makes, go back at somebody, like. It makes me feel like the queen that I am. <laughs> yeah. Don't fucking play with me. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you ever feel like you, like, do you feel like you have to respond? Like, because you give nobody's, like, a name. Not saying a name. You know what? And, you and, and I'm going to tell you, my, my people, especially my sister, she'd be like, do not respond. Or like somebody said, you need to make a fake page and respond. I'm not. There is nothing about me fake other than my wig. <laughs> if I got my phone in my hand, I get a notification. You come for me, I'm going to cut you the fuck out. It's just, it is what it is. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not one of those people who has a team to run. I run my own shit. Bitch, you come for me, I'm going to get at your neck. It, the men in your life, do how? what do they say about, you know, when you come at them? For if they like accidentally... I don't come at them. I don't. The men in my life, I treat... With respect. I was raised to be submissive, actually. So they leave the commode up. You just quiet and silent. Yes, it's a mistake. To err is human. Now, if I fall in okay. that bitch, that's different. <laughs> Speak, speaking about falling in some shit. <laughs> you um, aren't uh, as voluptuous as you were <laughs> the last time you were here. <laughs> um, <laughs> That is a nice coat you have on. Thank you. But uh, it's hiding uh, mm. a, a lot of, a lot less. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, you've been on a fitness journey. I have. Can you talk about it? I definitely can. Um, so I went on a fast and a cleanse. I hired a nutritionalist. Um, I've gone to the gym seven days a week. I went on a, a calorie deficit. Um, I've really been hitting it hard and I've lost about 90 pounds. 90 pounds. Let's clap that up, everybody. No, don't clap that. Don't clap that. Okay. Don't, don't, don't clap that. Don't clap that. <laughs> no, I'm bullshitting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How much time you got on your hands? Seven days a week. I'm bullshitting. The fitness guru. I'm bullshitting. I'm bullshitting. I'm bullshitting. I know. Um, I was, first of all, that's the one thing that coming on the platform showed me. On um, when I looked at myself, I was like, damn, I look like that. Jesus fucking Christ. Mm. So <clears throat> I got serious about my health for real. And um, I knew my fat ass was not gonna go to the gym. I was not gonna not eat. I knew that I needed help. So I actually got on those injections and they worked. Um, all right, well, let's do it like this before we talk about the injection no, itself. No, 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 before um losing 90 pounds, what are some of the benefits just for you specifically, like? What has that experience been like? What has changed? You know, oh. like, because I know, like, hopping out them, them sports cars and them big uh -huh. foreigns, I know it's a little easier now. So it just is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. That really was hard to do. <laughs> Look, up in first class, you don't have to uh, do the thing all the way now. I, just, I was like, okay, let me make it tight. It's all fly out. Okay, something happened. A lot has changed um, from my energy to I can't fit anything that I own. And I have a lot of things. If anybody needs some clothes, I have a lot of designer, nice things that still have tags on them. Please let me know. I'm giving away everything because I got to get a whole new wardrobe. Um, I look a little bit better. <laughs> Do you feel more confident? Oh, baby, I was I was confident. Oh. A big bitch, <laughs> little bitch, medium bitch. That ain't changed at yeah, all. Yeah. At all. No, no. Uh, and shout out to uh, No Shane. He had a song called, you know, You a Thick, Fine Woman. Mm -hmm. And you know you was thick and fine, like mm -hmm. you know. I know I was fat as fuck. Now I'm thick. And oh fine. damn! Oh damn! Now, oh, man, now, see, now I'm thick and fine. You said it. You said now, it. Now I'm holding. Now so, I'm no, holding. With that being said, like you're even the men that approach you has yeah. to have changed a little bit. It has a lot. What, uh, oh shit, a lot. <laughs> a lot. What has changed? Like what is from again? This is for those, who, and again for the people out there who wants to you know change their body life style and their body weight. Tell us. For you, what has changed? Like even when men approach you, um, how do they approach you? The what caliber, kind of men? The caliber of men have changed, honestly. Um, we talking lawyers? Get, uh, or what we talk? What we talking? What we talking? We're, we're talking the the. <laughs> Well, oh, okay. no, 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 I think you're okay. about to say so. <laughs> so look, you got you to gotta keep it a buck. Like, think about what you're attracted to. Are you attracted to somebody that's overweight? No, you're not. You're attracted to people that are fit or look a certain way. So it's the same thing. Um, the the class of men have changed a lot. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I think, oh, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble for this one. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to say it. Um, I think, uh, I think you know, women who are a little more, uh, let's just say larger in stature, mm -hmm. um, some men may look at them as much more probably easier because of probably low self-esteem. That's self -esteem. true. That's true. Um, they may attack that, you know, mm -hmm. try to move on that. They say, do. Oh, I think she got a, a low, oh, low self-esteem. Oh, they definitely do. That's another thing your platform did. It brought a whole bunch of broke ass niggas to me <laughs> thinking that they could just slide <laughs> in. They think they could just slide in. No, baby, I was fat. I wasn't dumb. I, don't, I didn't pay like I weighed. Uh-uh. Oh, no. Right. right. <laughs> the niggas that approach me have money. So, so tell us, um, give us one experience that you have experienced since, you know, this 95 pound loss um, that you might, let's just say you might not have experienced prior, like just from your, you know, from your feelings and your oh thoughts God, towards you're gonna it. Oh my get me in trouble. <laughs> right, right, let's go, let's go. Realize yourself. Um, Some nigga done picked you up, huh? Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> picked your ass. Literally. <laughs> literally picks me up. Um, people keep picking me up like I'm a small child. Yeah. <laughs> and it, so my birthday was uh, March 14th and I had a big event that weekend and people were literally picking me up like I was a child. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. How did that feel? Yeah, Weird. Like, Put me the fuck down. <laughs> but then you're so little, you can't move. So it's like, okay, you know what? Just go with it. I've been picked up a lot. It's now, weird. after you've experienced both weight and 
Do you ever see yourself gaining that weight? No, back? I would never. And that's also because on the inside, I feel way different. Like I feel much more alive. Um, and I have kids and I want to be around to see my great grandkids. So that was another large part of why I wanted to get healthy, because one of the people in the comments had a very valid point. And then she sent me this book about mucus. And that's what kind of jump started everything. Like I I do want to be around and see my kids enjoy the fruits of my labor. Like I've worked too hard for them and their kids to not have to work. Like, why don't you want to be around to see that? So I, I, I had to take this shit serious. You said a book about mucus? Mm hmm. Yeah, oh, wow. Great. Yeah. No. Um, did you ever get like body shamed, like even in the trucking industry or just going out? Yes. That, so you experienced that a lot? What? Yes. People yeah. always like somebody. I literally just went live. Um, I told you I had like 8,900 people on my live. One of the idiots on the live literally was like, oh, she finally lost all the weight and now stand up. Now what? Stand up. Bitch, I'm not standing up. Like, oh shut the fuck up before I sit you down. Like, but they body shame all the time. Like, she's, I made it real. She's so big. She ate the trucks. Like, yeah, they were very, oh, wow. very rude. It didn't fuck with me though. Cause I mean, I, I'm real petty and I started to do, I bet your nigga fuck me real, mm. but I, I left it alone. She left, left it alone. alone. She, you could have put it to the test. Um, yeah. uh, so in our last interview, you know, we had asked you like, um, you know, to say that you're making that kind of money mm -hmm. where you're saying, hey, I'm touching 100 M's. Um, why not? People were, you know, we asked, why not go and say, hey, let me do this yeah. procedure. Let me get that procedure. Go get tummy tucks and yeah. lipos and all of that shit. Um, first of all, like I said then, I'm going to say it now, I smoke like a train. You cannot go get surgery and you smoke. You cannot. you cannot. One of the downsides to transportation is extremely, extremely stressful. It's one of my stress relievers. So it just was not an option. Um, I have stopped smoking before with carrot juice. If anybody wants to stop smoking, whether it be cigarettes or weed, mm -hmm. carrot juice removes THC and nicotine out of your system. So it helps with the cravings. I've done that before. But I started back smoking and no, a bitch was fat and smoking and you just cannot go. I would have to also leave the country because you have to be under a certain BMI to do those surgeries. And it just, it, it wasn't worth the risk. Like you could pay the money. You got the money, you could pay, they'll do it. But to risk my life just to look a certain way, fuck out of here, no. Come on. Yeah, mm -mm. And I'm glad you're still standing fast on that. Yeah. Um. So with that being said, uh, you know, we I heard of things like uh, Adapex pills. I heard of Ozempic. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot the one that starts Manjaro. with Manjaro. Manjaro. Um, mm -hmm. I seen Oprah was, uh, she had left uh, Jenny Craig and said, hey, I'm on this new yep. thing. Yeah, Ozempic. O Ozempic. Um, did you give those a try? Uh, I did. I tried both of those, Manjaro and Ozempic, and they did not really work for me. I didn't see a difference. I didn't see that I was losing a significant amount of weight. Um and I was I was filming for this show, uh, Boss Woman of Dallas, and one of the girls that was sitting there, we asked her if she wanted something to eat, and she was like, no, nah, I don't have an appetite. And she was explaining that she was on these injections. And what's crazy is the guy that helped her with her injections, I personally know. It's actually Chef Mike, one of my, my actual close friends. Oh. I'm like, are you serious? But then I hadn't been on social media like that. So I looked at his page and I noticed he's lost a significant amount of weight. So I called him and I let him know what I'm trying to do. Like I want to get, I don't want to just lose weight. I want to be healthy on the inside. Like I want cholesterol to go down. I want my blood pressure to go down. There's a lot of things that were going on that needed to be fixed. He gave me two injections, two different types. So. Are you getting any more injections? No, I don't okay, want to. Okay, I'm going to say, how do you. Uh, no, I, I, first off, I have a big ass head and I don't want to look like a balloon with a big ass head and a little bitty body. Uh-uh. Self aware. Yeah. <laughs> you you got to be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No. Now, again, uh, like you said, you look good. Uh, Gucci you. down. I mean, you look, you, you look radiant. Um, Thank you. And it's crazy because I'm not saying that when you were here before, you didn't look good. It's just, as you stated, when you feel good, yes. it kind of comes on the outside. So right now, it looks like you're feeling how you look. And Thank it's like, you. I can really show it. Again, you were confident already. So yes, I was. You already was bad you know, early on. So Thank you. Uh, with that being said, um, what, what we wanted to do was this. Uh, you know, we originally named the title of the last, the first interview from XCon to 100 million. Mm -hmm. And we tell the story of Kiara, you know, becoming the trucking guru. Um, one thing that we didn't lay into is, um, you know, that past of, okay. you know, kind of how you became who you are now. 
Um, a lot of people, you know, the Spencers out there, the, mm-hmm. um, you know, the pocket watching JTs, uh, they picked up at little things like um, she doesn't have a driver's license mm-hmm. and things like that. So what I would like to do is kind of start off by going back to okay. uh, that that lifestyle you were living that led up to you kind of getting into trouble, um, okay. why you didn't have a license and things like that and how you became what is, you know, a felon, I guess you could say. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it. Um, so before I get started, I want to give credit where credit is due. I came from a phenomenal household. My mother and my father, I had my biological dad, my stepdad, only referring to him as my stepdad. So people know who I'm talking about, but he is my father as well. I came from a very, very, very good home. I just have always been hard headed. I always been one of those people that have to see for themselves. So. My mom tried her best with me and I just started running away. Like I've been a runaway since 12, 13. And I left the house um, about 16. Were you a middle child or? No, I'm the oldest. I'm actually the oldest of eight. Oldest. Another thing that I did not want to do was set a horrible example for my siblings. Because even to this day, I'm the leader of the, the word tribe. People think about the trucking guru and the tribe. Well, it started with my siblings. Like love my sisters and brothers to death. Um, I was not going to set a good example for them. So I left. So I got with my oldest daughter's father. I was 17. He was 29. I met him walking to McDonald's. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Seems like you. Uh Shut up. (laughs) I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. What was his occupation? young, but you're (laughs) ready. (laughs) You know what I'm telling you? Um, what was his occupation, if you don't mind me asking? 29 years old. Whole ass nigga. <laughs> that was his occupation. Employed by whole ass niggas LLC. Right. Uh, whole ass niggas. He had no business with me. Yeah, right. He's a good man, Savannah. Now, um, <laughs> I'm curious, seriously. Like, what what's was- crazy is when I got my first felony, that's when I found out who he was. I thought that his name was something completely different, the name that he gave me. I was young and dumb. And when I got arrested for my first felony, that's when they told me who he really was. So let's go through it. Kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. He's very smart, very manipulative. Um, Your platform actually brought him to my page. I have not seen this man in over 20, how old is my daughter? 24 years. And he came out the woodworks to... Oh, wow. Yep. Why haven't you seen him? Like, was it your choice? <clears throat> he chose not to? Um, A lot of things took place with him that were crazy, that belong in a Lifetime Movie Network type show. Um, but nonetheless, he was not in her life. My middle, my middle baby and my youngest son, their dad took care of my oldest. Um, so... The past with him was very ugly and, and very crazy. So let me ask you, um, what was the first felony? Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, bodily injury, and threat. To who? <laughs> so I was minding my business at home, okay? And again, I was only 17, and I was also seven months pregnant, I believe. Seven months pregnant. And someone comes knocking on the door, stumbling drunk, acting crazy, asking for him. It was a young lady he was dealing with. Um, we ended up getting into a fight. I cracked a jaw, broke a couple of ribs. And when the police came, I had blacked out because I need to be whooping his ass, not hers. So that was my first felony offense. Um, I didn't understand at 17 what that meant because I'm thinking it's like law and order. Like the bitch came to my house. Why am I going to jail? And what's crazy is the first officer that responded was like, I'm not taking her to jail. The se- no, the second officer was like, he told him to put the handcuffs on me. He said, why? Because this lady that lived below us in the apartment complex, she was standing there like yelling at the lady to leave me alone because she was so sweet, a oh, white lady. And um, her and the officer is the only reason why I didn't get 25 years. There was an incident that happened back then. It was a, a couple, a black guy and Hispanic girl, and they had chopped somebody up and they thought we were trying to do some copycat type shit. But that's when I ended up finding out who her father really was and the real name and different things like that. Like, it was fucking psychotic. 
I ain't had no business out there acting like I was grown, basically. Mm-hmm. So that's when I found out that I couldn't get an apartment, couldn't get a job, and uh, didn't have a driver's license. <laughs> so that's pretty much how that started. So, what does a 17-year-old girl with a felony do with a baby on the way? Honestly? Yo. Because I know what I would have did. As a... Well, to be as good as I am in trucking, you got to be a fucking hustler. For sure. So I ain't ever sold no ass, but I'm going to keep me some motherfucking cash. Amen. So I got out there and I got it. I'm curious, who bailed you out or who got you out my of this? My mom and my dad. Your mom and your dad came my through? My mom and my dad came through. And did they give you any like pep talk to what you better not do going No, through? because my, my family knows who I am. My family has a saying that I make a friend with the rock. That's why I cannot believe people think I'm mean. I'm actually very, very nice. I'm very friendly. You really are. And they know my temperament. I don't go looking for trouble. I, they know I am some shit. So they, they already knew off top that something is not right. Plus my neighbor had told them what happened. So the uh, the man who, of course, your your oldest is mm-hmm. father, uh, baby father. Um, when you found out who he was, were you like, was he married or something? Was it like, was he? He was on the run. He was on the run. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! He was uh, on the run. Okay. He was on the run. Used a different social security, bought a different identity, social security number, all of that. And he had time to holler at you. Mm-hmm. Did and under baby a, in under you. an entire different identity. Wow. Yeah. And, he, and you never, you never question or saw nothing that was I was 17 years old with a man that had me in a very nice very nice apartment got me whatever I wanted oh, did y'all get married did y'all get did y'all get married young enough fuck no mm-hmm. no <laughs> that fuck shut no up. no god no no Thank shout god out no. to uh yes your second you know the the one who came after to take care of you you know yeah. shout out him now both my dads are freaking amazing um and my family is is a beautiful family. Like we're like TV to where my mom and my dad and my stepdad, like they all are together. My dad has had other kids and they go to my parents' house. Like it's we ha- we have a beautiful family dynamic, but I was the problem. I was I was the problem. At least you are. I was I was the problem. I was a huge problem. Huge. When did you start getting it together? Around what age would you say? When I brought the kid home from the hospital and she was sitting in the car seat and I was sitting there like, wait a minute, this little person needs me for something. Mm -hmm. My daughter completely changed me. Um, I had already had an older daughter, but she wasn't mine. Somebody's child I took at a very early age running around with her. Um, But to have Aja, that's what changed me. I didn't get it together immediately. Um, again, I didn't understand the weight of a felony. I didn't know that that meant I couldn't even go back to school if I wanted to. I didn't know that that meant the job I was working as a dialysis technician, like my cousin got me on and like that was literally under the table. I wanted to progress. I wanted to become an RN. I couldn't because of my felony. So around 20, 21 is when shit started to click. You, hold on, you mentioned your first felony, mm-hmm. as in you got... One or multiple after? I did. <laughs> okay. What <laughs> what transpired to have you go into deeper into the felony territory? Um, I was not going to work for pennies. I had children that depended on me. Um, and I am not, I'm not a person that makes excuses. So I did the best that I could to take care of me and mine. So without going so far into it, um, uh, can you tell us some of the nefarious stuff you got to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just curious as far as um, you know because you're a hustler at this time I have and you gotta my, get it I have things sealed and expunged um, but they're very bad <laughs> you might want to stop fucking with me on the internet let's just say that <laughs> I got things I learned with the first felony that if you're found guilty in the state of Texas that you cannot get that sealed or closed if you're found guilty by a jury and the state only had to prove it was done in that day, done in that county, and what was used was a deadly weapon. So mm-hmm. I learned quickly how to finesse the system. Mm-hmm. Not to do shit in Texas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, all right. Now, you know, when you figured out that uh, shit, I can't keep getting these felonies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't keep getting wrapped up now. Right. 
and then you got into trucking on the question. No, wait, no, hold on. So I, I, wait, I'm curious because you serve time, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. How much time, if you don't mind? I don't want to talk about it. All right. So with that being said, <laughs> what did you learn while serving whatever? You know what? And I'm glad you asked me this because y'all asked me this on the first episode. We weren't ready for that one. I know. I honestly learned that time is precious and that I got kids that fucking need me. Like, I don't have time to waste. I learned to get my shit together. Like, there has to be something else out there. So that's when I started going for the customer service jobs. And that's when I started trying to go corporate, right? And um, when they outsourced my department, that was like a huge blow to my heart because I had worked really hard to get my little job. So... Were there any men helping you through your path? Like, just you know what? I'm coming um, to help support, like, stay I, with me and... I want to... Did you say stay with me? Not stay with me, but let me no. help Let me help you. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you say Well, you know how stay? men want to come save, save uh-huh. a person, you know what I'm saying? No. Um, I will say that my children's father, um, Christopher, shout out to Christopher. Smurf, what's up? Shout out, Chris. He has been... He was a very big support system, but he was young. We were both young. Like, we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. Um, but he stood the best he could. And we we made ends meet. We did. Did it, Did you ever want to get into scamming? Um, did I ever want to get into scamming? Like, um, you know. Like now. I'm going to, yeah. I'm, I've seen, <laughs> I, I, I've seen, no, I've seen stuff on my timeline. <laughs> I've seen things. And it's like, wait a minute, what are they over there doing? It, right. Um, it, 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 they say you learn so much in uh, whenever you do time, you learn from other people. Like, hey, this is how you really, say. this how you really get to the. It really, it, you know, it's some. Re- let's just say it's some remarkable people in the penitentiary. I'm very just, smart. I'm telling you, it's very smart. No, I did not want to get into scamming, and that's only because trucking money. Had right. I not got into trucking, there's no telling what I would have done. No mm. telling what I would have been in. Okay, so let's do it like this. Um, uh, we're gonna do this for. Uh, trucking guru for dummies 101 <laughs> because it seems like most people just probably didn't pick up what you were putting down I don't Maybe. know if you were talking too fast or you were giving it to them too raw for your you've been in this for over two decades mm-hmm. uh, going on three decades um, and I don't want people to think this is overnight for you they, they it's not. people keep thinking it's overnight like okay. you just woke up and started so doing so I need this. to slow it down for yeah them. slow it down and please you. if you can just take us through how you became where you had a felony. Okay. And you became to where you're actually being able to get million dollar offers. Okay. Um, you don't got to go through the gist of it, every detail, but take us through that journey you. for yourself. A little slower. So I want to start by saying this is not a Kiara Henderson is phenomenal story. This is a with God, all things are possible story. Um as I sat back and I reflected on things that had actually happened in my life, even with how I got into the trucking industry by a friend that I grew up with, who I talked to every blue moon. And for this person to call me because my job had outsourced and I'm standing at the end of my driveway, smoking a black and mild. And he calls just to check on me. Hey, black Jack, you good? No, nigga, let me tell you what's going on. Like everything that I've ever said is literally what happened, but I'm gonna slow it down so people. And let me ask you this: mm-hmm. that friend, mm-hmm. what status was he then? How much money was he making, and where is he at now? Worth a quarter of a million dollars, and he is still in the trucking industry. He is on my page. Been on my page since 2019. Amazing. His name is Christopher as well. Shout His out name Chris. is Christopher as well. He is phenomenal, but he is the one who even put me on the path to say, "Hey, look in the trucking," because again, my job was outsourcing. I got all these felonies. And he said, Key, I got seven felonies, but I'm worth a quarter of a million dollars. Damn, okay. But he owned a truck, right? So I'm thinking that that means that I need to go get a CDL. And he says, no, nigga, like the back office, go work for a company. They take felons. Hmm. Okay. So that is the first eye opener. Is that known throughout the trucking industry that the back office take felons? I honestly don't know. I don't, it, from the comments, it cannot be known. But something that I need to make very crystal clear is the transportation industry is felon friendly. It is a second chance industry. So I filled out thousands, thousands of applications. I did my research. Now, remember, I'm smart, smarter than the average bear. 
So I looked at what they needed, what they required for you to actually get hired on with them. They required a bachelor's degree. They required several years in the industry. I lied. Okay. I finessed the fuck out of them. You you lied about which part? Just saying you had a bachelor's. All of it, oh, nigga. Oh, I didn't know nothing about I've been about here for trucking. a while. I got a, yes. I got a degree. Let me tell you something. I, I am a fucking hustler. I created fake employee of the month certificate. Oh, oh, with the picture. Yes. Hell yeah. I was at fucking Office Depot making fake certificates to fake come. Yes, you got to oh. do what you got to do. So University I, of Phoenix. Right. You hear me like, how are you an employee of this fake ass company? But I was, I'm telling you, employee of the month. I was. You're and they amazing. wanted they wanted a bachelor's degree in logistics. So where the fuck am I get from? I ain't got a high school diploma. But I figured if they're asking for your high school diploma and they ain't never checked that and they didn't gave me jobs, they ain't going to check this community college that I'm from the line say I went to. And they didn't. And they, and they didn't. And did, did you expect them to? Let me tell you something that's even crazier. So I did a couple of interviews. And when I went to this one in particular, thought I aced it. Put on my nice blazer with my little leopard shirt. I was ready. I was fully prepared with this binder that I made with all my fake accolades. I go into there. I ace the interview. I don't hear nothing from them. I'm like, oh, God, what am I going to do? Because nobody's called me back. I'm, apparently, you suck at interviews, Kiara. So I sit down on my chair, and on the floor, there's a book called Easy to Believe by Reverend John Hendricks. I pick up the book. I read the book. I'm like, okay, okay, God, keep refilling my cup. The, the book is telling you you are who you are because you're believing, and you have the ability to believe to be Anything that you want to be. It is a universal law. It's not just a Christian law. It is an actual law. And it gives the example of a boat going down a river and the oars, whether you go left or right, that's your belief. You're either going to believe negative or you're going to believe positive. So I immediately say, okay, I'm going to switch my mind. God's going to open the door, right? A couple of days later, Schneider calls me. So when they call me, this is the first step that I knew God was opening doors. When they call me, the lady said, Kiara, you did a good job on your interview, <laughs> but my background never came back. She said, it's just spinning. It never came back. Wow. So they never, like for whatever reason, it was hung up in the system. Stuck she said, in limbo. She said, so as long as you, what you told us is really what happened and that everything that I told her is what happened, I never lied like about my background because that was going to come back. So they gave me an opportunity. So within that company, that's where I got my feet wet when it came to actual trucking. That's where I learned how to do trip planning and route planning. It was hard as fuck. Trucking is not an easy industry at all. The concept of it is easy, but I can show you pictures where my face was breaking out in hives. I was so stressed out because, again, I lied. I ain't no shit. What age are you at this time? I'm young as fuck. Um, Nigga, this is when I was in my 20s. I'm 42 now. Yeah. I'm What's old. the learning curve uh, for you as you're as you're in it now? Let me tell you, I don't even understand the lingo. I don't even understand what the fuck is going on. My my schedule was from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. and I was off like a few days, so I started going in extra early because they were doing handoffs. And by the time I was handing the shit off, I was everything was fucked because I didn't know what was what. So I said, okay, if God opened the door, you got to do your part. So I went earlier. And I left later to see what I was handing off if it made sense. I went earlier so I could grasp what was going on, right? So that's how I learned the basics of trucking. But the learning curve was everything. The lingo was different. You got to understand weights. You got to understand check calls. You got to understand driver's hours of service. You got everything was, I was in a foreign and, land. And I want to, you know, God is going to be sprinkled throughout all this story. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, for your self-perseverance, for, for what you, for your reason, your purpose, for your um, for everything that you are, mm -hmm. like you said, most people aren't going to. You said you work five a.m. to five p.m. Mm -hmm. and you went earlier and stayed yes. later to make sure you just get like you're already the door's been open. Yeah, now it's up to you. I got. That's why I want part. people to understand that like it takes more than just the door opening. Now <clears throat> you got to walk. That book that I'm talking about, it taught me that believing is an action. Like you cannot ask God for something. Oh, ye of little faith. You got to have a little faith of a mustard seed. But what are we going to do on our, our part? Like, are you going to be, if you want to ask God for something, but what the fuck are you doing to even get it? You just sitting back waiting? No, you got to put some believing action behind it. So that's what I did. And I, I did not do it perfectly at all. I kept messing up so bad to where there was a, a gentleman named Frank who said, you are messing everything up. Let me help you. 
And so he started helping me. Had he not helped me, I probably would have lost my job. Mm. He started helping me and Victoria started helping me. And Jessica, and I'm still in contact with these people. Jessica started helping me. They helped me grasp what the hell I was doing. So that's- What did they, what did they see in you that made them want to say, let me I was help. very nice, okay? okay there you so go, there I'm you not go. a That goes a long way I too. I was very nice. <laughs> that goes a long way. <laughs> I was very nice. And um, I was, I'm very, I'm very teachable. Although my name is a trucking guru, I don't think I know everything. I'm still learning a lot day by day, you know? So I was teachable. So fast forward to when they actually asked me to move up to Wisconsin and I moved up there, froze my ass off, did good, kicked ass, but I wanted to come back home. So I got another job. Wait, I'm, I'm skipping apart. I worked for a different company, LCL Bulk. And that's where I started to see the difference in a larger company versus a family company. So the company that I was working for, it was a generational trucking family. I didn't understand it until I went in early and I saw the dad was coming in and then the son came in and then the son's son came in. So they were all coming in doing different things. But it's like, okay, this is an entire, this is a family company, but it looked like a Fortune 500 company. Wow. But I started to understand that, okay, so this is passed down to them. So they were managed, that's the company that was doing the, um, they put the shakers on the trailers for Hershey. Mm. And that's when I started to learn, like, okay, this is actually a billion dollar industry only because I'm seeing the cars that they driving. I'm seeing the lifestyle. When they have the company picnics and shit, we going to they shit. It's nice. This ain't no acres. These motherfuckers is rich. Mm. So things are starting to click. Then I come back home. I come wait, back wait, home. Wait, wait, you said home. Uh, again, you're... Again, I was like, in Wisconsin. Yeah, but I a young black girl from Oak Cliff. Uh, all the way up in Wisconsin. Loved Wisconsin. Loved Wisconsin. Um... The way that we're treated in Texas is way different than Wisconsin as a black American, just so y'all know. But I had to come For the better back. or for the worse? For better. Okay. The police pulled up next to me. I was playing booty. He asked me what I was playing. Told me to turn it up. It was a, a huge difference. In Texas, you know, we ride booty tight when the police is next to us. Yes. So I moved back down and that's when things changed because I'm now on the shipper side. So understand, I started as a regular planner, went to an operations manager, Went back to a regular planner. Then I moved to a ship on the shipper side. I had never seen things from the shipper's perspective. I never seen things to where now it's my job to get these truck owners, these fleet owners, these single, this nigga only got one truck. It's my job to get them the loads. So everything is starting to click. I left off the part to where when I moved to Wisconsin, the way God opened doors, but God was there because even me moving up there was a, a miracle. Like they wanted fucking $5,000 to move my stuff from Texas to Wisconsin back then. I didn't have it. They called me back and gave me $400. Even with the house that I found, the lady that worked up there for Schneider rode around with me, found the house in the snow. The snow is different. The snow is as tall as I am in Wisconsin. So I couldn't see. She seen a piece of a sign. They ended up giving me the house. First, all the white folks that was there at the open house looking at it, like God moved God, yeah, God miraculously all for me to be able to, for this journey, for me to be where I'm sitting now. That's the whole point of this. So even with me working on the shipper side, I still didn't understand what it meant to be independent. Working on the shipper side, that's when I seen, okay, these niggas is really getting to this bag because I was being nosy. I went in early and I seen that they was making six figures again. What we did on the shipper side, we moved all the plants and shrubberies and Christmas trees for Home Depot, Shopco, and Lowe's. So that means that I know what I'm saying as an independent dispatcher, you can get dedicated lanes because I used to work on that side. I know how this goes, right? So I saw that they was making six figures and I just asked the fucking question, what do y'all do when the season is over? Because, And I was asking only because the dude that I was dating at the time he was a truck driver. He owned the truck. And we wanted to take things to an, uh, the next level, right? So you need to come run over here with us. Like he said, well, ask what they do when the season is over because what are they doing? They're making six figures in less than four months. What happens after that? So I was asking just for that purpose. The response is what changed my life. When they asked me, why? You want to dispatch us? Yeah. And I'm thinking that that means like I'm sitting here at this job dispatching for them giving them their loads. I'm thinking I'm going to dispatch them out on loads that they already have. No. So when I finally got the nerve to leave my job, now you got to keep in mind, I am a fucking felon, the worst kind. 
on paper, I looked like a killer. Like, it was very hard for me to get a job. Not impossible, but it was very hard for me to get a job. Did you almost say, like, P. Diddy? I did not. Uh. <laughs> I did not. Just making sure. Just I did making not. Sure. And I'm going to tell you something. With everything that happened to me, I move real different when it comes to the internet now. I don't, I don't, I don't get in people's business because you never fucking know. Right. Like, the shit that they were saying about me, like, had I sat back, I was like, damn, bitch, you did that? What the fuck? Like, Monster. It, it, like you are the work. Like it will make you hate somebody that you don't fucking know, and you don't fucking know what the fuck going on. So that that that's one of the things that was good. Cause yeah, we don't read comments. I don't until we read comments. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't divulge. So I don't think P Diddy did all of that shit. I think that it's something much larger happening, and that's only because of my own personal experience. Like even with what happened with Ashley. <laughs> And again, I'm new to the Ashley situation. I just heard about that. Uh, so they, it, no, they it, made a post about it and they said that she was found guilty and they're going to do sentencing on her in July. I spoke yeah. about this way before any of this happened, before she even went to court before any, because on this side of it, people really do push your fucking buttons and people's like, well, it's just the internet. See, you say that because it's just you making a bullshit ass comment. And then you get off the phone, you go on about your day. But imagine one person getting hated by so many people that don't fucking know them. And people do other shit other than just talk shit on the internet. We've had people pull up to our houses. I done got in a fight at the Wendy's. Like, it's bad. It's oh, not. Oh, oh, say right there. Yeah. Someone pulled up to your house? What? Yes. A address get. Not like, just my house, but my sister's house as well. From just like Googling or just like looking at things online? And See. The biggest, the biggest thing that these people want to know is what's your business name? Just because you just honestly might want to know just because out of curiosity. It's some dumb ass, broke ass, desperate ass people that don't got shit better to do than fuck up people's lives. Yeah. If you think I'm ever going to say my business name on this motherfucker for you broke ass hoes to hate on me, you can eat a dick. I'll be a scammer, whatever the fuck they want me to be. I will never give up what I built for my children. I won't, because these people is too bored. They will try to tear you down. I ain't fucking with it. Now, you said uh, a fight at a Wendy's, not a fuck with a child or a uh, yeah, Wendy's. Nick and Sam's. I, look, I, was on my, I was on my way to the Clearport. Okay, okay. <laughs> talk talk the, to us. Literally getting on a jet, ordered me an Asiago, because I was, you know, in my weight loss stuff, so I hadn't eaten. And I just wanted to grab something to eat, and the bitch threw a drink at me, and I politely pulled that maid back over and snatched that bitch through the window. Why yes. would she throw a drink? Is she, she was calling me a scammer and talking shit. I told her she need to worry about you oh, know, she her need from the internet. Yeah. Oh, the shit. internet got somebody beat up. Um, on behalf of real life, we're sorry. Yeah, it's y'all if, 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 if it's anything <laughs> it's we did, y'all's I mean, fault. That's why we're here now. We're trying to clear up all this. We're going to clear all this shit. It's y'all's fault. Motherfucker, damn it. goddamn. Shit. Oh, shit. The internet is a very strange it's and a, scandalous it's a, place. It, 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 it's, it's, it's no man's land. I, I don't it know is. what it's about it. But um, wait, you were saying, what's the name? Kel Keisha, what's the name of the lady who Ashley. got guilty? Ashley. What's what's her? You know her song? Ashley Grayson. Ashley Grayson. Grayson. What, what yeah. happened? Give me, give me a real the rundown because I don't know. But I don't follow people's stories. Um, that's one thing I do not do. The only thing that I knew is that some shit happened and folks was talking shit. One of the people named Sherelle Hodge, who also did a video about me, was one of the people that had to go to court, and she was found guilty, and they're going to sentence her in July because she put a hit on their head. Put it back. Mm -hmm. oh. She put a hit on them. That is not okay. I do not agree with that. The only thing I'm going to say is I said this on my own platform before all of this happened. Y'all never, you never know who you fucking with. And people really think that they can say whatever the fuck they want to say behind that keyboard. You don't know who you fucking with. People need to stop playing. Yeah. Um, which is wild because, um, you know, when we sit back and think about this internet shit, it's like, you know, you you think you're making a video, but you're really playing with people's livelihoods yes. and how people feed their family. And uh, yeah, somebody with enough paper, you, I put a hit on you. And she allegedly. did. Allegedly. No, oh. it wasn't allegedly. She oh. was found guilty. She did it. <laughs> she did it. She did that shit. And then talk, called the FBI on herself. On herself? I, I needed to holler her father. Oh, man. But I get it. Like she, they called her a scammer. They said this, that, and the third. 
the same route, route they try to take me down. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you ever want to pay somebody to powder their hand up and go slap a motherfucker? So here's the thing. That's that's the fucked up part about me. I'm not going to pay a bitch to do shit. I slap you You got to look. Look, I'm I do my own dirty work. I slap you myself. <laughs> like like Webby said, I could pay for it, but I'd rather it's free. Yeah. Like, I, I want to feel that shit, bitch. Like, uh, God, God's still working on me. So let's do it like this. Let's You come back home. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you were the family... You're with a family situation from in Wisconsin. You come back to Texas. Uh, you get on the other side of it. And um, again, are you seeing what what kind of money are you seeing in this? You're okay, just making so ends meet. Let me explain what I did. I panicked. Oh. I ain't know what the fuck I was doing. I'm not it's joking. Normal. I really thought that they were going to be giving me loads to move them on. I thought that they already had like, you know, I'm, like the company was working for. Right. No. Um, it was literally my job to dispatch them. Dispatching means it was my job to get them the loads. The one thing that I hate is people like, oh, you scammed people. So the only thing that Kiera has ever, ever said is that if you get a driver a load, you can then charge 7, 10, 15 percent for that load. So if the load pays, they make a thousand dollars, you get 10 percent of that. So let's just say at the end of the week, you made $10,000 because you charged 10% or whatever they made. That's dispatching. Like it's not no extra saucy, nothing. Like you don't even get a, a load in your company name. You get it for your driver and you charge 10, 15, 7%. So what's the average price of a basic load? And I don't, when I say bucks, you mentioned like Oak Farms milk or something. Mm-hmm. What's so, the, yeah, what's the average? It's going to be dependent on your equipment. So I can't say, pull up DAT trend lines fast. You ain't doing nothing. Uh, 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 pull up a. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you ain't doing You ain't looking at that Ashley Gracie. Yeah, you're trying to find the fuck out. She looked, looked, looked. Pull up. What, what? She's on big business. Yeah. She, period. <laughs> what do you got pull up? He got pull up. Tell him to pull up what? DAT trend lines. Pull that up real quick. DAT, for anybody who wants to know what the average, what I'm supposed to make. Like say, for instance, if you if your friend of yours or you got a truck, how am I supposed to know what to pay these people? DAT trend lines. And if you scroll down to the bottom, it'll show you spot market freight, which is a spot load, basically means low board on the spot. Yeah. Simple. Well, I, I, I'm I'm long on the spot means. How like, are you lost? Cause, all right, let me just say this. When I see when I go to 7-Eleven, I see a truck back there loading up some Coca-Cola cans. That's, that's different. So, yeah, 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 give, yeah, so that person that drives that is 9 to 9 10, he works for Pepsi or Coca-Cola. Okay. Or it is a person like myself that has access to hundreds of trucks. We contacted Pepsi because we're a minority certified company. That helps. All right. And they gave us a contract. So that's touch freight. Okay. So that means that I'll take your tractor, they'll give us the trailers, load up the trailers, and they go do deliveries. Okay. I'm learning. That's contracted rate. That's contracted freights. That's different. That would never be spot. Unless they gave it to a broker and the broker put it on the low board, then that becomes spot freight. Okay. Mm-hmm. Act like I know what you're talking about. You know? Oh, my God. No, I mean, no, the only reason I say is because, God, listen, man, listen. I'm very far removed. It's a lot. Do you know? Do you, do you hear? Look, do you hear? Yeah, I'm listening, nigga. You gotta, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's your problem. You, I'm it's learning a, as I go. It's a lot, but I'm gonna tell you, like, when you asked me the question, you said I heard you was touching over 100 m's. Yes. When I said that was four years ago, that's because I was doing oil and gas. So I was doing sand moves and crude oil moves. That's dedicated. You got to have a certain amount of insurance coverages. You got to have a certain amount of trucks that's going to truck with you to do that. You got to have different type of equipment, PTOs and different stuff like that. So the money that I've made in the industry, it's never been on general freight. The Pepsi, Coca-Cola, they don't pay enough for me to fuck with them. I go for specialty shit like grappling. I got some DOD stuff. I got different stuff like that. Out of the hundred million that let's say you make, how mm-hmm. much are you paying out to make sure this a shit lot. gets moved? Yeah, that's what, so, I, I think people get caught up on they do. the they number do. of, like, no, nah, there's a lot that goes into and, making this And I, I don't like how people assume, oh no, because there's maintenance in there. Duh, bitch. You got to keep the trucks maintained. 
You got to keep your drivers paid. You got to pay for fuel. There's going to be breakdowns. There's going to be tires exploding. There's going to be driver errors that cost you over a hundred grand an hour, depending on what you're running. It's a lot. It's not just, oh, here's a hundred million free and clear. And like I said, let's be very clear. I've made over that. Very clear. Um, yeah, we hey, now, no, no, no. And trust me, the proof is in the pudding. We're gonna, we gonna, we gonna talk. We gonna yes, talk. we are. Now, there's a lot of naysayers, mm-hmm. especially people are, that drive trucks and, well, mostly people who have never been in a truck. Yes. They say there's not that much money in your industry. Yes. Their industry. Why do they believe that? All right. So I want for one second for people to utilize common sense. People say that there is no money. Give me a shot. People say that there is no money in the trucking industry. They're usually people that drive for somebody or they own one truck and they're doing what I refer to as spot freight. They're running off of a load board. None of them have the insurance requirements. None of them have the age on their authority. What's the lady's name that was here last time I came here? No, it was the two ladies. They, They met me in Florida. They, after we did this, they actually they came. They actually met you in Florida? Yeah, they wow. came to fuck with me in Florida. Oh, wow. They um, came to fuck, was it LaToya? La, one of us LaToya. Oh, yes, them. Yes. So, shout out to them. I love them. They're so sweet. But even with us being in Florida, her, her, one of their dudes, he like was in trucking. And he was like, there ain't that money in there. So I was like, put him on the phone. I promise you, any of these niggas that's talking shit, you can't truck with me. And what do I mean by that? Thank you so much. You can't truck with they're me. Sti- That's they're- a shirt, nigga. We, hey, we, oh, it we, is. It definitely is. Can't truck with Let me you. tell you what I mean by that. He said he waiting on a contract. He waiting. To, he's waiting to sign up for a contract, but his authority isn't old enough. Right. He don't have no age. So there is no money in what you're doing because you're not doing what I'm doing. Right. Remember, let's all revert back to, unfortunately, the little white boy, Spencer. Hey, Spencer. <laughs> We ain't forgot about you. I owe him a meal. Cause and mind you, Spencer really hung on like, man, she got them evictions though, man. Mm-hmm. What about them evictions? Yes. Kiss my ass. <laughs> Look, the one thing that he focused on was she cannot own that many trucks because companies associated with her. He never pulled up my company. You understand the age on an authority is like you having an 850 credit score with good age and low utilization. That's not just public knowledge. You don't just give that up to people because people can use it. The trucking industry is fucking cutthroat. You know how people say, well, she'll never show her trucks. So you know what I do? Let me tell you what a a nigga like me gonna do. You know the people that's on the internet talking shit, saying they got this, here's proof. I screenshot that shit and I'm calling them shippers taking their loads. (laughs) As as you should. Uh. Like, yeah. Let me show you the load I'm on. Yeah, I'm taking it's, it's that shit. It's cutthroat. It is. Y'all like Pirates of the Caribbean. We goddamn. are. <laughs> it's like it's like the dope game. It, it definitely is. is. And he was like, people like here will say hide your company. I want y'all to stop. You got to stop listening to people that are not in the trucking industry. They have, this is the wild, wild motherfucking west. It's another little nigga I wanted to mention, but I don't remember his name. A little I, clown I, ass nigga. I'll mention his name, but before I mention his name, uh, things like the DOD, Department of Defense. Yes. Can you really even go into details of, like, let me explain to y'all when I got a DOD. No. <laughs> when I got a DOD no. contract. No, you cannot. And let me tell you something. Um, How does a black woman get a DOD contract? Can we, we don't. start there? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you gotta be like, yeah. <laughs> we don't. I'm going to tell you something. Um, please keep in mind that they could not find my company's name because my company is not in my name. Never said it was, never will. You own nothing, control everything. I'm not stupid. Um, I'm also a, a very bad felon, so I can't even I can't even qualify for certain things. The smart thing would be, I just got a 187 million dollar contract, right? Right. Posted it. Congratulations. It, thank you. Uh-huh. It was on my daughter's birthday, but the voice that you hear is a white man. That's AI, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Can we play that? Do you have it on your phone? Can we hit an audio on that? Is I your... do. Let me. uh, We can. We definitely can. Um, And let me just explain, just so people. I a lot of people are going to be on here. Thank you, darling. A lot of people are going to be on here hating, right? 
Yes. A lot of people made videos saying that that's fake and blah, blah, blah. So let me explain to y'all what happened with that. What y'all thought was going to bury me did nothing but catapult me. So many prominent people within the industry reached out to me because unfortunately the black community does not understand business, but they do. I told y'all before I was fucking with the Russians, fuck with them heavy. There's a, a nice gentleman that I still deal with. He came down for my birthday weekend who called to check on me when that shit happened, just to check on me. Had it not happened, he would have never called to check on me because everybody sees me as the big bad guru. Well, with that check in came a very large check because he then connects me with the right people who have been running this contract for over 40 years and they wanted to partner with me. Well, they were running it the wrong way. They were running it with shitty drivers. They were doing um, shifts and they weren't, they weren't maximizing profit. They weren't even taking the longer loads because they never even thought to do teams. So that's why you heard him say, motherfuckers, because somebody made a video saying 300 teams. It sounded like he was no bitch. Let me, me get y'all straight real quick. I wanted them to do longer loads with teams in the truck. Teams are very difficult, very difficult to get, keep and maintain. But if you pay them well, they're going to fuck with you forever. Yeah. That's re and real quick, before we talk about mm -hmm. that 187 million, we did have a person by the name of Poetic Flacco. Who? who Poetic Flacco. He, what is he, that? He's from California, but he's oh that a, bitch, that a, nigga. He came on here and that said, nigga. you know, he addressed it. Y'all had this trucking guru on here. He said, why did y'all even have that lady with it, his first of all with his lisp talking ass? <laughs> why flaws. did y'all have that lady on here? First of all, my nigga, you might want to stay in your motherfucking lane because this ain't it. I promise you, it's not. I told y'all I had a nigga sit on this couch so we could have a nice conversation. <laughs> We would love to have had him here, but uh, yeah. you know, he's, he's a West Coast nigga. We need to do uh, we need to do a nice conversation. I need y'all to stop speaking on shit that y'all don't understand. And it's only because I am going to still stand by. You don't have to buy anything from anybody. I have created a millionaire just from somebody watching me giving free game. Okay? I have had people that have taken the information in the gyms that I've given for free and applied them in different areas and they're making millions of dollars. I'll even count them in the 21 millionaires that I've made. What I don't like is a lot of ignorant people speaking on the transportation industry to where people are thinking that, oh, it's not possible just because your broke dumbass ain't doing it. Which leads us into uh, the video, which a person calls you and says, hey, Kiara, I hope you're sitting down. Yep. Um, they have an offer in which, of course, like you said, on your daughter's birthday to where mm -hmm. they want to start on March 1st. But, you know, March 18th March was the date that, yep. that they gave the date that they gave. Mm -hmm. in which they stated, hey, we hope you have the capacity for this many trucks mm -hmm. that pays this much per week mm -hmm. that if you could follow this, therefore you'll make out, again, $187 million $187 per year. $187 million per year. And that's that's only at bare minimum. If we yeah. have to take recoveries and do different things, we're going to make way more. So the question that everyone on here will be asking when they look at this you know, young black woman on our couch, mm -hmm. why does that person call you? for that kind of contract. That goes back to, okay, matter of fact, to be 1000% honest with you, because I have an army. You see, a lot of people don't see my tribe. So whereas I have a hundred plus trucks, together we have thousands. So I can go confidently say that, hey, if you give us this lane, I guarantee you we can have coverage. Let me show you the breakdown on the money that's gonna be fucking made. Because what I'll do is I'll tell my tribe, I got this lane, I need y'all to get people to cover. They will then go get carriers. They will then make 15, 25%, whatever they want to make off of it. The drivers, the carriers, which is the fleet owners, will make really good money. My dispatchers will eat and we're all happy. That's what this is about. This is to where I don't quite understand why the black community doesn't get how if we were to truck together, we would take over the world. And they don't got to because me and mine are doing it. Right. That 187 million, that's why I said for shits and giggles, what's 15% of that? Because I'm only going to take 15% of it. The rest I'm giving to my people. I can go get just off of the $187 million contract alone. There's paperwork that can be given to you and they'll give you a fleet based off of that contract. They'll give you money to run that contract. I could easily take that. Let's say I didn't own no trucks that y'all keep asking about that I'm never going to fucking give you a title for you fucking idiots. But let's just say if yeah, you can leverage. Yes, you can. You actually can get funding based off of the contract alone to go get the equipment. Mm. So 
for the lamest terms, for the guy who has, let's say, $75,000 in lucrative fund, he got a settlement, got hit in the back. Oh, my back. I'm hurting. The insurance, they cut him a check. And he's like, man, I keep hearing the trucking group talk about the, the money in trucking. He wants to buy a truck for $30,000 that have 800,000 miles on it. Let's just say old used truck. And he has an extra, you know, 50,000 to uh, 40,000 to kind of play with, to, to take a chance. Would you tell that man to get into this game? And this is outside of your course and nope. learning the game. Yeah, about yeah, because I want that nope. I want that to be known that this is not a finite type no. of money game. Like mm -mm. you have this, you have no other income, and this is the only thing you have, no. and you're trying to just make get rich quick. Skin. He don't already need to be in no truck. Period. Figure it out though. He trying to. <laughs> this you know he not, lied about that shit. <clears throat> this is not overnight. This is not microwave success. The trucking industry, you can lose your fucking ass. Now we're not gonna forget that I done posted on my page over. Half a million dollar loss I had to pay. Like the trucking industry, you make a lot of a lot of fucking money in it, but you can lose your ass. You can file bankruptcy fucking with this shit if you don't know what you're doing. Mm. This is not something where you hear somebody say, oh, I made a hundred million dollars. So you run out to buy a fleet of trucks. No, I have had countless nights, crying days. That's why I smoke cigarettes. You ever say she says she <laughs> smokes now. This motherfucker is it's stressful, stressful as fuck. It's very stressful. Very fucking stressful. But it's worth it. I mean, shit worthwhile ain't easy. Yeah, no. Most hustler with a hustler mentality, you know, there come losses. Yes. When you when you're in the mentality of, I'm gonna. It's a game. It is. And in games, you lose. But well, you it's also a common sense type thing. Everything that we own comes in on a truck. So why do people keep saying it's not money in trucking? Maybe they just trying mm -hmm. to give you crumbs and little bits of pieces of here and there. Like you gotta use your fucking noggin. Like if I, you hear somebody on here telling you. Go after dedicated freight. Go get uh, minority owned, women owned, small business owned, different shit like that, hub zones. Like there's different type of classifications that you can get as a truck owner and they have to give you these loads. Certain companies have to like Target, fucking GMC, Toyota. They have to give it. They, they got to fuck with you. In your, um, in your situation, as far as in your tribe, what mm -hmm. percentage is men? What percentage is women? I don't know. Okay. Then let me say this. What know. percentage is drivers versus doing something else outside of what percentage started as drivers and then led up to, to you know, getting contract works, shipping, uh, or what percentage did not start as drivers and came into the game like you did? I honestly think that the majority of the tribe, it's people who are trying to get away from a nine to five. Yeah, drivers think they know everything. <laughs> Drive. Drivers think they Drivers seem to be the one in the comments. They are. To dispel and all that's everything another, you're that's another thing that I want to make sure that before any of you comment on this, pay attention to the types of comments that are going to be made. And ask the person that's commenting, how many trucks do you own? How long have you been in the industry? And how old is your authority? And what type of freight do you run before you listen to them? Because I even did another contract for a reefer and niggas can't even afford the insurance that's required. Stop playing with me. Wait, wait. You said for reefer? Yes, reefer. Refri refrigerated trucks. Oh, 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 oh. They, can, they can't oh, even oh, afford oh. the fucking insurance. Like, stay in your place, little boy. Oh, oh. oh. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, one might hear $180 million a year. 187. $187 million a year. And uh, shit a brick. <laughs> so, or two of them. <laughs> when you receive that news, like, what possibilities did you think, like, what were some things that you was like, now nah, this is finna start happening or now nah, I'm finna get into this? Like, are you, are we gonna continue this lane or does this open up new doors for different avenues for you? Cause I remember the last time you said in here, you're not fucking with no real estate. You're not because this shit is just too good. You know what? I'm glad that you asked that. Um, and to be 1000% honest with you, like I told y'all offline, we got more contracts that I can't even speak about because of the type of freight that it is. So, so many doors have been open because of everything that's happened. But I am going to get into the behavioral health clinic side. Um, one of the people that found me from y'all's platform, they do behavioral health clinics. And so we got into it and they're doing six figures a fucking week. That's where the money is. Yeah. Like to be honest. And because I have a lot of 
behavioral health issues within my family, um, somebody that I love very near and dear to my heart, they could utilize those types of services. That's something I'm going to be getting into. Anything that has to deal with the insurance game or health insurance or things like that, it's, it's such a bag. And Man. the black people owned just a percentage of what that is. I just learned what third, three quarter houses are. It's And that was the lady who was my um, Lyft driver, who that, when I told you she recognized me only because of my voice from being on here. Um, but she told me about the three quarter houses and another thing that y'all need to understand is Texas just got a very large amount of money for funding. Have y'all heard about that? No, no, no. Uh, please. Hold on. Let me tell y'all. Yeah. Just in case anybody is on here and they want to actually do something with their life besides hate on the internet. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, Put us on game. Texas just gave... $15.8 billion in direct state aid and $9.1 billion in local government aid and for the federal government. So that CDL school, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, the behavioral health clinics and different things like that. It's accessible. Mm -hmm. um, Karen, let me ask you, from your first interview coming out as a trucking guru, which you already had a following before that, mm -hmm. uh, coming out and doing that interview, let me ask you, first of all, do you regret coming out and putting your face on camera? No. Okay. Because the amount of, oh, now, I never thought that I'd be hated on as much. I didn't even know people knew who I was. Like, I had no idea. Like, people just have a a, 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 a fucking comment for, you don't even know me, bitch. What the fuck is wrong with you? Opinions are like assholes. I don't right. think that I can ever express how it feels for somebody to tell me that I changed their life or that I opened their eyes to something. The hate that I got, it pales in comparison to the love and the gratitude and the thankfulness. Like I was only at, I think 200 something. Now I'm at 334,000 or 333,000. All my platforms have grown. And even with the hate, like I thought that that was going to be like, oh, well, you know, whatever. I'm not going to stop doing it. People was like, well, you need to stop going to speak. I'm never going to stop speaking because I know I ain't scammed nobody. I'm not a fucking liar. And this is my story. I'm never going to not tell my truth because you don't know. Somebody just called me this guy out 17 years. They found me off of y'all platform. 17 years. I was able to give him my course. Like, however I can fucking help, I'm going to help. And you you went through that hate where they're like, oh, she's scamming, you know, because where there's smoke, there's fire. People want to hear something and say, oh, well, yeah, based on this, uh -huh. she has, it can't be real. Mm -hmm. Um, for that not to get to you, and like you said, for oh, it got to me. No, well, I, I, it got to me. I, well, let me say this: for, I wanted to go. Yeah, I know you want to pull up on some. It, it on got some to of me. Them. It like, got hey, to me. You hide behind that keyboard. Who the fuck y'all talking to? <laughs> but you said companies have reached out to you since mm -hmm. then, and have not only said looked out for you, but also said, "No, we're about to go in business with you." Yes. Because of who you are and what you've done. What's crazy is the type of lane that I'm in now. There are only six or seven companies that do it. And all of their doors were closed because of what happened to me. One of them opened up their doors to me and I have the ability to scale up to over a thousand trucks and they're doing thirty, forty thousand dollar weeks per truck. Like God has moved miraculously on my behalf because no matter what people think, you reap what you sow. No matter what people think about you, they got everybody's gonna have a fucking opinion, but you reap what you sow. That shit don't make you nervous when that type of no. responsibility fall on you? No. I have I have to take care of thousands of people. There are mm -hmm. thousands of people within my tribe. So, I mean, it's a reason why God put me in this position. I have some, uh, I want to play devil's advocate and I have some questions. I bet you do, <laughs> fast. Because um, they said y'all don't ask the hard questions. Yeah, no. Ask some hard questions. Nah, so when it comes in this game, the individual that you deal with, does it matter what type of background they have or what they get into? I'm just, for instance, if Diddy needed you to move and you can't ask him what's in the truck, but Diddy got shit and he would need you to move it. You need a thousand trucks. I treat people. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, not the pink, not the pink. I'm gonna tell you something. I treat people how I want to be treated and I'm not, I'm not a respecter of persons. Right. So I'm, I'm going to move whatever he needs me to move. 
All right, so let's get to it. But if R. Kelly asked me, I ain't doing it. Oh, I'm man, I have to. <laughs> I'm just playing. I have 13 girls. <laughs> oh, <I> was, sorry. <laughs> hey, 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 shit, yeah, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. So let's, let's do it like this then. So now let's get to it because um, a lot of people question your lifestyle. Um, so you make this kind of money. Mm-hmm. Um, they question, oh, she was in a closet doing going live. But no, let's start with this. Let's start with this. Hold on. Let's, let's get into it. Can I start with one before that? Go ahead. All right. Someone asked, um, she said she had a good time one day at a strip club mm-hmm. and that she spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. Why but why is it not a picture? Why doesn't it exist? Where's you know the what? girls who's supposed to say like, thank you, trucking guru coming through? They're all on my, they all on my story. If you look at my fucking following, most of it is strippers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so most for someone who asked strippers. that, like, why, why most isn't there... St- testimonies of the blessings. Like, what the fuck do I want them to do? They're fucking stripper. They thanked me that night. I reposted them that night. Like, this is it happened ages ago, but I got videos. I'm, I'm going to send them to you. Okay, all right. I got videos of it. For those who question, she has videos. I even got a video where I was at a booby trap and they ran out of money. Like, stop fucking playing with me. Oh, man. See, that's all. That's the only video we need. I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> you go to booby trap and they run out of money. I'm going to send it to you. Okay, let's do it like that. I'm gonna say, I, got, I, got, I got videos now. Yeah, it was gonna... recorded. And you have to remember, uh, geniuses, one thing that y'all don't know about me is my page used to always get flagged because I, I used to always have hoes on that bitch busting it wide the fuck open. That's why it ain't no fucking videos over there. They shut my page down. Does the trucking guru go both ways? No. I ain't, I ain't talking freight. I'm strictly dickly. All right, but you just like look. You like you like what? What is it about a strip club you love so much? Um, I like to support the women. Number one, Thank you. number two, it's very rare that a woman comes in throwing the type of money that I throw. Thank you. And every time I go in, they always ask me, "What do I do?" And so it's always a chance for me to tell them, "Hey, this is what I do. You don't got to do this." Hey, hey, hey hold on, hold on. Yeah. Be be honest. It makes you feel like like you in the game though, still kind of don't it. Mm. Who told you I was out? (laughs) 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 So so let's address, you know, oh, she's always in her closet. uh, You know why? Let me tell you something. Did y'all see Bruce's video? Yeah. What Bruce will tell y'all? She's in a big old mansion overlooking the wall because I am still driving big Maybachs, race and all kinds of shit. I am. One thing I learned is stop showing these hoes your motherfucking life. All they're going to do is hate. That's all, all they're gonna, gonna fucking do. Once you show them, they're gonna yes. be like, oh, that fast. All they're gonna do is hate. All they're gonna do, I know, I learned that from the other mansion that I was in. No, I stopped showing them. Plus, to be 1000% honest with you, my children ask for more privacy, and I respect that more than anything. My kids are fucking over this shit. Like, the hate that I got, it took a toll on my family, and I will never, ever, ever sacrifice how they feel. Over some fucking views. Yeah, shout Fuck out your, your daughter. Yeah, shout out your sister. I mean, they, my kids. They, my go, kids to ba- they like, go to bathroom. They go to bathroom. They do. Like a they show do. They get, show do. Catch a bullet in me. And you got to you got to take that into consideration. Like, I'm just here to help. I don't make my money off social media. If that was the case, baby, I'd blow this bitch wide the fuck open. I've made too many millionaires. I got too much fucking money. I would literally take over. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to motivate you. If you see some shit you like, come fuck with us. Come truck with us. We got you. But putting my kids' life out there and because you know my kids are homeschooled. Yeah. We have a, a very lavish lifestyle. My daughters just had birthdays. I went over the top for them. My oldest asked, please do not show what I got for my birthday. Like they are over this shit. Now you mentioned the reality show uh that you were possibly shooting. You also mentioned Lil Wayne mm-hmm. off camera, like you were doing like uh, you know, from a, a sh- you don't you you might bring some cameras into your life though. But I have one hundred percent control over it. That's why I haven't done a reality show. Um, my son, people don't even know that I have a son because he's never on camera. Like, my relationship with my children is way more important than fucking social media. There you go. And I have to protect them. I'm their mother before I'm anything. Now, this is something I've been going through is uh, spoil children. Mm. How hard is it not to spoil your children? And how hard is it to discipline them when, you know, you've already given them so much? Like, and they've, Come off feeling entitled. My oldest is a blessing from God. She's never felt entitled. She's very thankful for the little things. Again, she's the one that said, please don't. She didn't even want to open her gifts with people in our home. She wanted to wait until everybody was gone because she said people, you know, she didn't want people to feel bad because they either can't afford those types of things or give them to their kids. So I respect that. My middle child. 
this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> she's the problem, child. She's the one that's entitled. She's the one that understands. She's the only kid I have that knows that we are wealthy, wealthy. So she got every name brand. She got the nice car. She got like she's the over the top one. My son could care less. Um, my middle child I'm learning is going to be a problem. She's now 18. She wants a penthouse. She wants certain things. And see, I, I take care of my kids until they're 25. At 25, they then get their trust funds. So this middle child of mine is that's the spoiled one. Trust for the uh <laughs> I just I love this part. For the niggas who don't know how trust fund works or what that is or how that is obtained, explain the trust fund and what it what it, what it does for a child. Um if you give them to if you give them a trust fund too early, it fucks them up. Mm-hmm. That's what it does to a child. That's why I said 25. Most kids get them at 18 or 21, I believe. 18. I made mine 25 because I wanted my kids to understand the value of a dollar. Mm. But that's hard. Do you have any stipulations on it? No. Oh, I don't. Okay. Not you graduate oh, college yeah, or right. no. <laughs> and and yeah. I Access. my um estate planner did for we're three generations in now, I believe. So they only got a certain amount and you run through it, you're fucked. Oh, but each of my kids know how to get a bag. Like my oldest does trucking, my middle child nails, my son is into technology and different things like that. So they're not going to be dependent on their trust funds at all. Uh, how hard is it not to spoil the men that are in your life? Um, um, because the men that are in my life are phenomenal. I spoil them because they spoil me. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's, for me, I'm gonna give you what you want because you give me what I want. What's the most lavish? Oh, I mean, what you want? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> what is a hundred million? What what mode, what mode can I do? For- you know what's crazy? I'm 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 actually a very simple woman. Um, I like flowers. Some J's. Oh, I love J's too. Yeah. I always got on some J's. What's, what's your favorite J's? What, what's the favorite one? The, some, uh, some black, ones, some sixes? the black and red ones, the one I wore when I came oh, yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the shoes I wore when I stand on business. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And the cherries, that was my favorite. Mm-hmm. Even though my daughter just had somebody waste blush at Ulta on my cherries, so I need some more cherries. But those are, those are my, it's, I'm very simple. I'm not, I don't need the, even though I've had, um, Big Frank, take me on a very expensive trip. I'm not one of those people. I I don't. What's the most lavish thing you got a gentleman that you wanted to like say, hey, here, this is just, you know, a token? Uh, of- Hublot. Oh, sh- <laughs> okay. <laughs> was he appreciative for me? Very. Was, yeah, what's, what's the reaction? Well, see, I'm going to tell you, that's <laughs> only because he took me to Turks and Caicos. We got a fucking 25 bedroom villa and it was only us. <laughs> Why are you? What the? Fuck? There's some children in Turks and Caicos that that's love. What he, no, no, no. That's what he did for my birthday. He flew me out privately to Turks and Caicos in a, a huge villa. Like so of course he gets a Hublot. Oh, now, uh, oh, now, what's the wildest thing a nigga done asked you for that ain't ain't coming? Like, 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 baby, look at look at this. Uh, look at this. Uh, this day date. I'm gonna it's tell fine. you. I'm gonna tell. <laughs> I'm, I, 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 I'm gonna tell you something. I thank God that. I believe that my personality exudes a certain amount of respect okay. and niggas don't even fucking play with me. They don't. Uh, you know, I ain't gonna lie. Some, some men might think they do a good job, you know, with the business and be like, hey, listen, here's what I need. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> that men don't fucking play with me. So mm-mm. I have to say this because uh, uh, boss man Brewster went on uh, Boss Talk one on one, and shout out Boss Talk one on one. Oh, go ahead. Have you ever have you had a a young man or any man that you were dealing with break himself trying to prove that he could afford you or your lifestyle? Oh man, I have. With the nigga. So I have. When when that happens, do you just like say, "Fam, this, so this ain't quite"? For me, people <laughs> people are to be loved and not used. So yeah. I'm never. A fan of the, you gotta buy me this, you gotta spoil. I'm, I've never been that woman. Um, I have had somebody that have have broke himself, and I I had to have a conversation like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh my god! <laughs> what oh. are you doing? Why are you doing it? Because I I don't require that. I'm not that person. 
at all. A man might feel like he's losing his power not being able to take They care. do. And it, it's hard dating because a lot of men feel like, what the fuck can I do for you? And men are providers. So it, it is it is difficult. So who picks up the check when you go to True Lux Ocean Prime? Is it art, like when you go and you're like, hey, let's go out. And let's say you ask to let's go out. I date men, honey. I, I keep forgetting. I date men. <laughs> so there's never a question on who's picking up a check. They are. I date men. Come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. I wouldn't. As long as shit, bro. And I don't know. But as long as I got a bag, it doesn't matter. Keep your money. Just hold on tight to you. You got a hundred million. Good. Because I still got my bag. Right. You know? I, I, I date men. I, I haven't. I thank God that I haven't had any leechers or anybody that tried it. Because, you know, she's she's plus size and she's rich. Let me see if I can dick her down and. I haven't had that dumb shit. That is some dumb shit. It is. And it happens. It really does. It happens. Yeah, I'm pretty sure works, somebody over there fucking if, Lizzo. If it's work, it's, it's, <laughs> if it works, it's some smart shit, I guess. <laughs> it's some smart shit. Um, so and again, uh, once again, uh, and again, shout out Boss Man Brewster. Shout out Boss Talk. Yes, uh, they had a Brewster. Great uh, they, they brought you up and he said, he said, uh, the people that are hating on Kiara is normally people that she's helped. And mind you, he's in the trucking business as well mm-hmm. to where um, these people that you have helped can sometimes turn Judas mm-hmm. and turn all the way in on you. Was he speaking facts? Let me tell you something. He's been there from the beginning. So I didn't even realize that he was seeing things from his perspective. I didn't know he was going to go on there and say that because Brewster do not do the social media antics. He don't feed into the bullshit, none of that. Like he, he don't, my nigga too player for that. He don't fuck with it. So when he sent me the video, I was stunned. I didn't know that like when I watched it, when I posted it, that was the first time I watched it. I was very thankful that he did speak the truth because that's the niggas that's hating either want to do what I'm doing or it's literally somebody that has slept on my floor, wore my clothes, Needed to to be given money because I don't loan money. I give money. Needed to be given money. And the biggest thing that he said was everybody that was fucking hating on her literally is eating off what she taught them. All of them are still in the trucking industry because of me. All of you are still making a bag because of me. Some of them are even trying to act like they teach trucking now. Bitch, you just got in this motherfucker. Sit the fuck down. Now, somebody did ask for us to ask you that your... um. Your, what you teach in trucking, mm-hmm. uh, the videos you have on your site uh, mm-hmm. can be updated mm-hmm. or either can be in more detail. I guess they- it They was- can be and we are updating our platform. I actually have started teaching live. Um, that's one of the biggest things that I've got. The biggest feedback I got is people wanting to learn live. So I've done so far, one, two, three, like four. Amazing. Four teachings and they all sell out in like five minutes. But Yeah. Last time you were here, you were saying you were going to get away from teaching. Yeah, yeah you were done with that. Uh, so, tell us where you're at now. What your thoughts on it? When I closed my courses, because I was like, you know what? Because first of all, they was trying to say she got money from courses, bitch. <laughs> she still got my money. She still, she got seven hundred of my dollars. <laughs> right. The fuck you think I'm doing with your little lunch money, bitch? The response for people asking that's actually why I started doing it for like ninety nine dollars. For my birthday, I did a class for $99 and I had the biggest name in government contracting come fly out to Dallas and he taught them for like four hours, right? It's hard than a bitch to do this because my goal is to help and to educate. So I go back and forth with closing it, opening it, and the response is like, can you please teach us? So it's, it's literally a tug of war. Um... What I have spoke to my black and gold shirts about is them stepping up and them teaching. And with the contracts that we have, we're, we're getting so many contracts now that I'm not going to be able to do as much as I am doing now. So we got to figure something out. We're going to have to. You know, and this happens often a lot. Everybody want to be touched by the one. Mm-hmm. It, so it like, because you're the face of the shit. Mm-hmm. So do you think that it would suffer, your courses would suffer if you made somebody else the face. Yeah. People love to see me. I've, I've had people do my lives for me on Tuesday. It, ain't, it don't hit the same. Before I forget, please. today I found out that 
One of the biggest things that I had been trying to do was to hire people fresh out of CDL school. Because the biggest issue is that I've gone through this school and I cannot find a job that pays good. We can now do that. Amazing. I did a live on it today. Like that, that's huge. That's important. Because like a regular college, once I'm getting, once I grad, once I graduate, yes. what do I do, what do next? You do? And where can I start And people, if they was having a serious time finding a job. Like it's like, you either gotta go commit to a big company and you making fucking pennies, or you can come over here like, nah, I said, I'm going a, I'm to a figure that out. And I figured it out. We said we, we asked a question about the, the drivers. Should they be asking their bosses what these freights bring in? Like, should, should drivers ask more questions? Does a cashier ask Mr. Walmart what they're making? No. No. <laughs> you ask if you want to, your ass get yeah. let go. They get fired. <laughs> hey, Benny so, over there asking too many questions. The thing is, step it up. Get your own company. You cannot think you're going to run somebody else's company. Go get your own shit. Stop driving for people. Get your own fucking company. It's not hard. Man. All right, so now, Kira, um, you're touching this money, man. You're looking good. You lost 95 pounds uh, in the last, you know, few months. And you, you again, excited about what's about to happen next. And I'm just I'm curious. So excited. For you, like, what? Like, uh, 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 more kids? Yeah, like, fuck no. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm <laughs> the woman to lose weight just to get fat again and <laughs> fuck them kids no not for the lack of trying no but, right. uh, but, <laughs> but what I will say is um, <laughs> look, look, if I was a nigga yeah I'd be in trouble <laughs> 25 again goddamn. let's get to it yeah. Yeah. Um, no uh, no, no but seriously you're making this kind of money like what pleases I mean trips to Bali on a weekend uh, the Maldives just for the hell of it I mean what what gets you like what what else is there for you at this age, there, at this point there, in life. Don't, don't say at this age like I'm old. No, no, you're not old. You're young. You're young. Fuck? And me and you the same age. At this age. age. Yeah, I mean, at this age. What are you going to do? Me and the you're same age and we just now. getting this shit started. So <laughs> not at this age, but more so at this point in life. Well, for um, me, um, there's so much more to give. There's so many people that really need help. Um, I want to go, like I told y'all last time, back to the prisons on my live. Um, Everglades prison. I'm going to go back there to go teach them with the CDL stuff. Um, I'm still, I have an initiative to do the halfway houses and different stuff like that. So this is my give back era. Like I want to make sure that I've, I've done the creating millionaires part. I want to make sure that I leave an, a positive impact and help people restart their life. All right. You, and I know you asked me about trips and stuff. Yeah, but I say, wait, are you, for me, are you a felon? Or do, can you, you have a passport? Yeah. Okay, I'm just mad. I don't. Yeah, I'm. I'm I, I got a passport. Now, now, so that's what I'm about to ask. Uh, you had you had got a, a government or a contract out of like I think you said Ghana or somewhere somewhere in Africa or something mm. or one of the. Have you ever went back to the motherland and said, "Man, let me give back. Let me go build a school like Michael Black." No. No. Okay. You let me tell you why. I, I and shout out to people that do that. We have enough people that need help here in America. There you go. I'm going to focus right here at home. Come on now. Um, try to make some some more positive change. I want to do, again, halfway houses, the three-quarter houses. I want to do behavioral health clinics. I want to open CDL schools. It's a lot that I'm, I'm trying to accomplish in a short amount of time because it's needed. And for all the felons out there that are really just like, you know, got dealt a bad hand, um, should they... Should their first option be looking, just look in the trucking industry direction? I mean, not saying you got to get into it, but just look in that direction. Should they be going that route? I'm going to tell you, um, being used to fast money, this is the equivalent of dope money. This, yeah. this, is the, this is the equivalent of dope money. It's the only thing that's fucking with dope money, I'm telling you. Um, robbing niggas ain't it. Looking over your back, your shoulder, worrying about the niggas kicking in your spot ain't it. Trucking is where it's at. And you, again, you don't got to buy nothing from nobody. It's too what much if you're just not there. that educated or don't like learning? Again, I have no high school diploma, no GED, none of that. Come on now. Either you want see, it or but, you don't. You See, but you're not stupid. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. not and not for lack of trying. Like, some of these niggas just dumb. Just, yeah. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm not, <laughs> like. Yeah, well, like, I'm going to tell you, I was fucking with a, a hood nigga um, as of late. 
and he just yeah he just did not know it was yeah he just, he did he and you don't and i'm gonna tell you one of the things i never fought people for because that's me like i'm not the business guru i'm mm. the trucking guru right. that's why pocket watching jt ate my ass up bitch i don't know that shit never said i did right mm. i know trucking so they only know what they know right um, that's why you got a nigga like me that's going to help. Boss Man Bruce are doing the same thing. Like, we helping. We're trying our best to help our community. Because some of these niggas, they ain't dumb. They just don't fucking know. Right. They just don't know. Got any shout outs? Shout out to Boss Man Bruce. Shout out to Boss yeah, Man Bruce. Shout out to Boss Man. Come back through. Come back through this motherfucker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Boss just Man, Boss Man Bruce. Brewster. And hey, shout out to Boss Man Bruce. Yep. Uh, first and foremost, um, are there any other truck like you have mentioned some names yes. that we should get? Who can you mention their <clears throat> names and who and what they do, what they are? Yes, Michelle. Matter of fact, hold on. Let me back up real quick. Yeah, let's yeah. Come on. We got all the time to work. There's a woman by the name of T Mika. Pass to freedom. They were sick about me having a hundred something trucks. They're gonna be real sick when they see these 300 trucks this lady got me. There is a woman that is getting our people to freedom the right way. She is fucking phenomenal. I'm going to get, she does not show her face on camera. So we got to figure that out. She's the shit. Pass the freedom. Um, of course, boss man Brewster, period. Big reform. Don't play with it. Michelle, Three Rivers. She is the first black woman to own a CDL school internationally in Africa and in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, Coach Sheldon and Tammy, they do the box truck stuff. They're dope. And I think you should bring on officially Travis Davis. He does government contracting. Huge. All right. We're looking at, we gonna look into them all. Yep. Um, for those that, of course, still want to follow you, catch Fuck your y'all. Lives. Don't follow me. No, no, wait, wait, wait. No. I, heard you, I heard you have a Twitch channel now. I do got a Twitch. Yeah, no, and wait that, a minute. That's, that's because IG is too like they asking where the stripper video is at. Bitch, IG shut me down. I couldn't go live when I was posting that shit. That's why I ain't on there. No cap. But Twitch don't give a fuck. <laughs> Stop me on Twitch. What about OF? What? Mm-hmm. What about the OnlyFans? They, they keep asking me to do OnlyFans. They really yeah, do. Yeah, now, now they really asking. They keep, <laughs> <laughs> now they really asking. Yeah. They, keep, they, keep, they keep asking me to do OnlyFans. Uh-huh. Yeah, listen. <laughs> if you pop that shit on a... Uh, 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 not pop that shit, but if you pop your shit... Right, what I'm popping? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm popping, Joker? <laughs> right. Damn! <laughs> Hey, my pearls. Hey, Jesus. I, I, I'm trying. I'm trying to think like from an 18 wheeler, uh, because you. Mer- I remember you put me on a lot. Of, Odie, gonna, can you even hear me? My I, my I camera been in my bra the whole time, oh, Odie. Shit. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't know what a lot of lizard was. I found out from from your from your standpoint, but uh, <laughs> but no, but the only fans could no, anyway. Um, Lot what, what, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know. Uh, what What other platforms are you on? Where are you mainly on? Because you do you do trucking Tuesday still? Do you? I don't. I really haven't. I've been so busy. Um, I haven't had time. Not because I don't want to, but because again, like within my tribe, like I've had to burrow. Like I, I've been pushing people into leadership. I've done like TTG certification where they got to be certified. The type of contracts that I can't speak about, I can only speak about in my tribe. So they've been being pushed to the limit. Yeah. I ain't been doing trucking Tuesday. All right. A nigga really tired of this shit. Hey, Honestly. I've done, done all that I can. Game. Yeah, you done gave enough I done, game. I done did my part. Yes, now, you done God, gave enough man, game. I done did my part. So Somebody I, pick up the baton. I'm going to be on Twitch just because I could play music and talk shit and have hoes on there. Do you have a Twitch channel that you could say? I do. The Trucking Guru. Everything trucking Guru. All right. Everything <laughs> Trucking Guru, man. Now nah, we got it. Everything yeah, Trucking hey, Guru. Hey, you might have us on the live one day, man. We're yes. going gonna to come on with you, guys. Yes. Yeah. Please have them over. <laughs> <laughs> Please have them over. Uh, all 2011 strippers. <laughs> I'm going to tell you now nah, that's uh, that I'm getting into uh, the entertainment. How many Megan challenges have you watched? How many what? Megan challenges have you watched? Um, I just seen hers. Okay. I just she seen hers and was. I said, okay, Megan, go, girl. I go see Meg. you. She go looks Meg. good. <laughs> Good man. Some, 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 some notables is uh you know Lotto. You know some notables is Lotto uh, did one. You know, Lotto did one. You know Lotto um, did a mega challenge. Uh, yeah, lying. yeah, yeah. Glorilla, she's notable. I know Glow did not do a mega no, challenge. Yeah, no, no, there some notables. Yeah, she did one. She did one. Glow did one. Glow did one. There's some notables. There's yeah, some notables. I, I fucks with Glow. <laughs> right. I fucks with it's Glow. Some, no, yeah, Glow. I fucks with Glow. Uh, what they say? Uh, is on Kermit. At, yeah. At the end of the day, uh, the day going in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day. 
Oh, <laughs> I seen Johnny Blaze do one. I did see oh. that one. Oh, okay. Oh, that's oh, I didn't see that. Was okay. That one was nice. That one was nice. Okay, I think she gave Meg a run for her money. Oh shit. Okay. Okay. About yeah, to check it out. She check did. It out. Well, you already know what it is. Um, man, I got to thank you because uh, at this point, you know, you're like family now. And I hate that, you know, they keep coming at your neck and we get we get frustrated when they come at your They're neck. They're going we, to. Yeah, we want to, we want to, you know what I'm saying? Come they on, hate we, what they can't fuck with. And, I, and you know, unfortunately, a lot of the hate is coming from the men who are just simple truck drivers. Damn. But, you know, once you drop that um, pride, I'm here to help. Man, she's here to help, man. Uh, the trucking guru, uh, 2.0, 3.0, god damn it, at this yeah. time. We got to say it, man. Uh, you're on the blue couch once again. Uh, you are a real yeah. life street star. Yeah. 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 Period. Let us. 187 million. Yeah. 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 187 million. Back up. <laughs>